I have been racking my brain today. I've been thinking, been thinking a lot. Uh, I've been trying to think of one single justifiable reason for a person to use either Mac OS or any Apple products. And, you know, maybe I'm just not smart enough. Maybe I'm just, I don't have the wisdom, but I cannot think of a single one. Uh, no offense, but I just cannot think of one. Now, uh, let's start. Let's start this way. Uh, Linux people like me are divided into two general categories. There are the people who hate Mac, but they really hate Windows. And there are people who uh, hate Windows, but they really, really hate Mac. And I am definitely of the latter category. Uh, because I can think of some reasons that you might want to use a Windows machine. Uh, I mean, I, I ultimately don't, you know, want to rationalize, you know, I don't want you to use one. Uh, but, you know, if you want to play a full screen video game, I can understand, uh, you know, you, taking advantage of the better support that you have on Windows. You can play a lot of these games on Linux, but it's easier to do on Windows. So I can understand having an alternative desktop for doing something like that. Uh, same thing, you know, if you, of course, lots of people have jobs that require some kind of proprietary software that's written only for Windows. Okay, I understand that. Um, but that said... Those are the reasons you might want to use a Windows machine. I can't for the life of me think of any reason to use Mac OS or to use an Apple device. Now, and I can additionally think of many reasons to not want to use Apple devices or Mac OS. Let's get into it. Now, first, hardware. Uh, Apple makes deliberately uh, debilitated so, uh, hardware that is planned to be obsolete. There, it's a lot of planned obsolescence. Uh, you know, a lot of people will realize, oh, look, there's a new iPhone. Suddenly, all of the software or all of the hardware that, uh, you know, the last iPhone is no longer compatible with all of this new software. It's not because there's anything principal behind that. It's because you are deliberately disabled uh, from updating your phone when they want you to buy a new one. Okay, just basic things like that. Or, for example, let's take actually repairing your hardware, right? So if you have... Uh, a Windows machine, if you have a normal computer, uh, it doesn't have to w run Windows. I have a ThinkPad running Linux. Now, if something goes wrong with my ThinkPad, let's say I accidentally pee on the keyboard or something like that. It's happened before. I'm not, uh, I'm not proud of it. It's happened. Let's say I pee on the keyboard and, uh, you know, I want to replace it. Well, it's no, no big deal. I send out for a $10 keyboard on eBay. I unscrew my old keyboard, replace it. That's it. That's all I have to do. Same thing with the screen. Same thing with anything else. Okay, everything's easily replaceable. If I don't, know, if I haven't replaced something, I can look it up on YouTube. It's super easy. Now, Mac devices, on the other hand, are built to be difficult to modify. You're not supposed to make any kind of changes or repairs. Now, how specifically? Now, for example, um, Apple devices you may or may not know have special screws in them uh, that normal screwdrivers cannot unscrew. It's not. It's not flathead, it's not Phillips head, it's, um, you know, their own special thing that's supposed to be difficult to unscrew because they don't want you going in there. Uh, and that's not because, oh, we just, you know, we're interested in the user. We don't want them to, you know, mess anything up. No, no, it's because they don't want you to fix things. If you're, open up, if you're opening up a computer, you know what you're doing, more or less. The other thing is, of course, Apple has these licensed dealers. They want to constrain the number of people who can modify these kind of devices um, and how that results, of course, is there's a more constrained market. It's a lot more. It's a lot less competitive than uh, you know a repair industry for Windows machines. So that makes it worse for you as well. You're paying more for the the same uh, or the a worse product. Okay. So now the reason, of course, people have Macs uh, is sort of an issue of social signaling, right? Um, there, you know, there's a certain brand that you are buying. Like when you get a Windows machine, so, you know, and go to Walmart and get whatever, there are all these different brands. They're all competing. Uh, they all look different. But if you get an Apple Mac, uh, they all look the same. They're all totally uniform. And they're supposed to be like that because you are buying into a brand and nothing else. You're not getting anything special. You're buying into a brand. And that's, uh, you know, that that's sort of the point. They want to advertise not the the hardware being better because it's not. They're trying to advertise that specific brand. Now, correlated with the hardware issue is the, the kind of mentality, uh, that, which isn't a mentality, it's a strategy that I think is taken deliberately uh, by Apple. And that is 
uh, the fact that Apple software and hardware sort of conspire for you. It, they conspire to take over more and more of your life. Okay, so if you get an iPod, for example, do, do iPods even still exist? I don't know. Well, if you get an iPod, whatever, um, they want you to use iTunes to sync with that. They make it difficult to use other software. And in fact, iTunes um, works in a way totally different from other MP3 players when you sync it with, you know, an iPod or something. Right. So normal MP3 players back in the good old days, they worked like any kind of USB device would. You drag and drop your songs in whatever way you want. You can customize it. Uh, usually when you load them up, you can also sort them by artist or whatever. That's fine. OK, iPods aren't made like that. They store data in a very special way, uh, special in the like uh, bad way, of course, uh, in that they the iPod only wants to show information the way it wants to and nothing else. Right. So you can't sort things by folder directory. That doesn't exist. OK. Um, and the thing about these kind of Apple devices is that they're all on their own wavelength because they want Apple wants it to be more difficult for you to actually use the products. They want you to have to um, if you get an iPhone, they want you to also have, you know, a Mac, uh, a MacBook or something because they're supposed to sync with each other uh, better by making it more difficult for you to interface with other programs. Uh, they don't want you using any other music player other than iTunes. Uh, or you know, everything sort of conspires in a way to get you to use the same stuff. Uh, and it, of course, it's a little ironic, isn't it? It's a little ironic uh, that, you know, Mac used to be, uh, you know, you remember the commercial, right? When, you know, the, the girl is running up and she has a mallet or a hammer. I don't remember what it is. And everyone's watching Big Brother. And then she throws the the hammer and it breaks the screen. Oh, wow. So if you buy a Mac, you're like a rebel and you're against the system. Well, now you all have computers that look exactly the same. Now you have everyone does everything in the same way. I guess some people have different uh, desktop backgrounds. Um, but every you know, all computers are identical totally replaceable. Uh, it's expensive to replace, but they are totally replaceable. Um, and all of the the actual choices that you have are constrained. And that's part of the plan. It's part of the plan. It's part of the plan. Okay. Because they want to control you. I mean, and don't, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. Windows would like to control you the way Mac does. Mac simply is a brand uh, no one wants to be in on the Windows brand. No one cares. People have bought Windows machines because they work uh, or because they're used to them. People buy Mac machines because uh, they want the brand. They want to participate in this. And again, it's a slippery slope. You buy one expensive overpriced uh, Mac device, you're going to be buying more if you want them to sync well. Now, here's a dumb argument, people say. Uh, this isn't so much of an argument, but it's like a justification of the existence of Mac. People say something like, oh, don't, oh, Luke, well, here's the thing. You might know a lot about computers or, you know, Billy on the street might know, you know, he might be a, a elite, uh, you know, he's a hacker or something like that. He knows a bunch about computers. Uh, but, you know, dumb, there are lots of dumb people that need a computer that just works, that's nice and simple. And Mac is that for a lot of people. Now, I don't buy that argument for a bunch of reasons, okay? First off, when uh, you got to put yourself in the shoes of a normie. You got to th start thinking like them. Now, when they use a computer, they don't, you know, they don't really care about operating systems. They might in the abstract if they've fallen for advertising. But what they want, what they want is uh, big buttons, big logos on the side that have their browser and all the programs they use. And they want those big buttons there and they want to be able to click on them and they want a program to come up. And if the program takes too long, then they must have a virus. OK, that's how normies think. I mean, we're talking about we're talking when I say normies, I'm talking about people who don't even know how to do private browsing. Like you go to their web browser, you go to their URL bar, start typing something in and all the porn they watch comes up. We're talking about that kind of normie, those kind of normies, those kind of bottom of the barrel normies. They they don't care about the difference between Windows and Mac. Both of them are equally usable. It doesn't matter. Any kind of Linux de uh, desktop environment, Ubuntu Unity or Mate or anything, they're all equally usable as long as you got the big buttons you can click on. Okay. And most people are doing stuff in the browser anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now, as it comes to the Mac being idiot proof thing, first off, as I said before, Mac stuff is made to be difficult to repair. 
Uh, it's made to, no, you're not supposed to, whether you are dumb or smart, to, you're not supposed to be able to fix your stuff. Uh, or change your stuff, or do anything, okay? Now, the thing is, Mac is not idiot-proof. It's actually smart person-proof. It's smart person-proof in a couple of ways. Um, they make it deliberately difficult for you to customize things. Uh, you cannot easily change stuff about, uh, you know, your, your graphical environment in the way you can, even of Windows. Windows doesn't have that much, but you can still shift things around really easily. You can get your own setup. When I use Windows, I used to, you know, do something like that. Mac is, you know, nearly impossible to do, the, do that kind of stuff. You have to really know the system. Um, and, you know, people who want to have their own, have their own sort of wavelength in their own machine don't have that ability in Mac OS. Because again, you have to do everything the Mac way. And the Mac way is infuriating. Okay. So it is not idiot proof. It is smart person proof. And that's sort of the problem. And that, that's the point. They're making devices that are uh, that you cannot improve, that you cannot actually make your own. They're supposed to be a product, okay? They're supposed to, and they're selling a brand. Now, what does a brand come down to? Last and not least, okay? What does a brand come down to? It comes down to a kind of social signaling, okay? Now, most people in the country still use Windows machines, and they will continue to use Windows machines, okay? Um, but where I live, I live at a university. I live and work at a university. Um, and most of the people I see who are going to be upper class people, um, you know, all of them, everyone I know who doesn't use a Linux machine uses Mac. Okay. All of them. Uh, actually there's one token Republican in our department. He uses a window, uh, windows machine. Everyone else, uh, besides me, of course, and a couple, a couple of the people who actually do computer stuff have Linux machines, but Mac is the norm in my socioeconomic class. Uh, and that pisses me off. <laughs> um, it, well, maybe it just pisses me off being here. That, that should be what I say. Um, but what I mean is Mac is a way, Mac has just become the, the brand of a particular socioeconomic class uh, to differentiate themselves from the unwashed masses. That's all it is. It, 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 you can't, I think everyone sort of understands that. There is a status signaling uh, aspect of Mac. Uh, because when it comes down to it, it has all the harm, hallmarks of conspicuous consumption. Uh, you are buying a product that is worse, that is more inhib inhibited. Uh, it, all, it is always showing how Mac it is. It's always showing its well-known form. You're always supposed to know that it's a Mac device. Um, and that, that's sort of the problem. Uh, it has all of these things. They all conspire. And when it comes down to it, there's no rational reason apart from social signaling to use these kind of devices. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Um, but you know, it's nothing you don't already know. So have a good one.